Hello and welcome to another edition of Steve Moore and Select. Steve Moore from Best Bets jumps in to join me. Steve, we're off to the Valley this weekend as the countdown continues to the Cox Plate. Yes, certainly, uh, Sean, and that's the telling factor, isn't it? Six of the past eight older winners of the Cox Plate have run in the Dato Tan. It's had a terrific record. Three horses have completed the double. And it's just been a fantastic race in recent years with uh, Ladder the Manor winning it twice, of course. Northerly Sunline, all the great names. Uh, only really one glitch on the horizon in the past uh, 10 or 15 years. Guillotine, guillotine at 30 to 1 two years ago. But it's been a great day. Uh, the weather looks to be picking up in Melbourne. Let's hope it stays that way. And whilst it's not a big feel in this year's Dato Town, I think it's a race uh, chock full of interest. Um, as we do this segment each week and we look at roughies, I thought I'd look at this meeting for the last couple of years. It, it played pretty true last year. Eight winners in the market, seven or five, at five to one or shorter at this meeting last year with only one uh, 15 to one chance uh, bobbing up. But the year before, we had four winners at double figure odds. So the Valley, to me, it tends to be one of those tracks you get, you get six or seven very predictable results and every now and again you'll get a little blowout jump in there. All right, well, can we get a blowout in the Dardo Tan? We've got a, uh, a smallish field, some high-quality Cox Plate contenders, as we talked about, uh, namely uh, Shootout, Who Be Got You and Typhoon Tracy. Which way are you leaning? Well, I'm leaning to shoot out marginally, but I wouldn't uh, attempt to sort of convince anyone any way or the other here, really, with this race. I'm sure everybody watching and everyone going to the races on Saturday will have their opinion, whether that's based on you know, the romance of which horse they prefer or their own opinion of how they think this race might unfold. I think Typhoon Tracy will go to the front this time. They rode her a little conservatively first up in the Memsey. I'm quite sure she wasn't gunned up for that race and it wouldn't shock me in the slightest if she jumps to the front, dictates, kicks away and Hooper got you and shoot out charge late and don't quite get there. I lent to shoot out only because he's drawn the widest. He might be able to have a Hooper got you on his inside and Staffy might be the might be the guy best placed to know when to push the button and I just love the way he hit the line last start. He clearly wants the 1600 and uh, he's so hard and fit. Mooney Valley I guess is a query. Uh, Mark Cavanaugh last week was shocking, extraordinary wasn't it? Maintaining his unbeaten record of Flemington immediately talked of horses for courses and Hooper got you of course only defeated Mooney Valley was in the Cox Plate so look I think it's really just a matter of your own opinion this race Sean. All right, well, whilst you're going for the favourites in that event, the sprint event is the McEwen Stakes. Tipping an upset? Well, I am here, Sean. I just think it's an intriguing race. We've got uh, the likes of Reward for Effort, Catapulted, Aranos, Haylist will all be in the market. Never seen Mooney Valley. None of them have ever really had any exposure to significantly rain-affected ground, apart from Reward for Effort in the slipper, but that's probably irrelevant either way. Um, I just think there could be an upset here. They've the best three of those, of course, catapulted a hay list and reward for effort, have built fantastic records. But gee whiz, I'm going to finish up with egg on face here, but I've been very, very well placed to do it. I like Morgan Dollar. Now, people are going to laugh at me, but I just think this is his race this time around. He ran second to Nakoni last year on the same preparation. Plenty of speed in this year's race. He won't have to lead. I think he's a better horse when he just sits off the speed. Drawn out a fraction. I think he can be one out, one back. He's proven on the soft ground. And let's face it, at this stage, I'm, I'm working on the track being slow. And I think he's going to be very well placed and got a terrific chance at odds, Morgan Dollar. All righty. So there's uh, Steve's selections on your screen for the McEwen Stakes. Our other feature on Saturday is, uh, of course, the stock stakes for the mares. And we see the battle, launch, the battle lines drawn again between uh, Faint Perfume and Valdemoro. You certainly do. Um, they've quinelled a number of races. I think they'll quinella this race again. Uh, provided we don't get there and there's any obvious pattern in favour of the on paces, I doubt it. Mooney Valley Rail, true, that's almost never the case. It tends to race pretty well in that position. They both ran well in the Memsey. And, uh, you know, history shows us the last couple of years, Tuesday Joy and Zarita coming back from the Memsey to win this race. Under the conditions, it favours the best performed mares. Lady Lynette and Montfleury both ran well on the Let's Alert last week and, and they'll be competitive. And... Uh, this is the race where, you know, maybe you could throw a ruffie in. I think Tony Noonan's pair, Bell Seneca and Sol Diva, might be the, the two ruffies in the race. Bell Seneca flies at the Valley. Sol Diva uh, ran very well in this last year. But, uh, you know, I think whatever you do on Saturday, you have something on the Quinella Faint Perfume and Valdemoro because it just might repeat again. And what's your best of the day? Best of the day, I'm staying with Dutchie's Lass. Uh, two recent wins at the Mooney Valley 1200, split by the attempt at 1400 metres. 
ran very fast time to win here in the Crockett, significantly quicker than the miles. It was second and a half. It was almost so quick I didn't believe it. So um, I've tried to run the tape over both the races and she was definitely quicker. Um, and I think just that tremendous Mooney Valley form from inside gates, rolls to the front, drawn to a horse with no early speed inside her. I think she'll just dominate the race again, Dutchies less. Well, let's hope you're on the money. Uh, thanks again for your time. Yeah, terrific. Thanks, Sean. I, just quickly, well, I mentioned those roughies, but I think the other one is maybe lucky I'm barefoot in the first. At this stage, I'm not sure what price it'll be, and it probably won't be huge odds, but it might be reasonable odds, and it's another one I like a bit. There we go. Steve Moran from Best Bets jumps in to join us with Steve Moran Selects, our preview of the Valley. You can find all of Steve's selections in this week's edition of the Best Bets. Good luck with your punning. Cheers.